Good morning, friends. Thanks for joining me on day 29. Hilarious side note, uh, my, my Facebook now, when I start to type in day 29, my keyboard automatically says Proverbs as a suggestion because it knows that every day it's going to be another day. It's going to be another chapter of Proverbs. So I was like, that is so cool. So cool that Side note, I'm going to turn this light on and the other one off. Okay, now I'm not blinded. Uh, good morning. So yes, my, my keyboard, Apple keyboard, is now suggesting Proverbs when I type. I think that's because we've been doing this now for 29 days. So this is what's awesome. My Apple keyboard has created a habit, a habit of reading Proverbs with me. So pretty cool. We have we have gone beyond the habit of being in the Bible every day and creating, forming the habit of once it's 20 days, it becomes routine. So good job. Uh, thank you guys. I look at these names. I look at each one of your faces and your names, unless you have a puppy as your profile picture, uh, then I know that's not you, unless we have a following of... Um, animals now for the proverb study but i look at this and i go seriously you guys have been with me every single morning and those of you who i i've seen that didn't make a morning i see you catching up and i see you commenting and you're commenting wisdom and i hope that you are telling yourself uh i am wise and that's not just weird happy self-talk that is when you have learned wisdom and you're teachable and then whether you do it perfect or not when you start to put it into practice at all and you are desiring to be wise you are wise so amazing work good job you're going to be able to say in a couple days yeah i went through the entire book of proverbs how cool so just because of my sappy heart i want to take a stroll down memory lane not a stroll down memory lane of just the fun, um, quirky things like falling off my chair and talking about Winnie the Pooh, but because that's insignificant gobbledygook. That's just part of who I am. I want to take a stroll down memory lane of scriptures because you have noticed, I'm sure, that there are so many scriptures that are repeated. And they're repeated the next day and the next day, which is really the next chapter and the next chapter. And when I see something like that, that makes me go, oh, this must be that much more important. So wh that's what we're going to do is we're going to take a stroll down memory lane, which is really a stroll down uh scripture lane to say what are God's biggest points that he just put in here multiple times. So I'm labeling today next steps and this is remembering to take heart and to put into practice the things that were repeated. So I think our next steps as we finish, we come to an end of Proverbs is that our next steps are to think on, to take to heart and to put into practice the most important scriptures. Let me start with the first three scriptures in Proverbs 29. These, I wouldn't say were necessarily uh, the top scriptures repeated, but I just thought, man, for next steps, these three are just like, let's set you on your way. You know, I picture when we, although I don't want to picture, but I'm trying. When I picture sending our kids off to college, which my in my head, we're not really at the door waving. Um, we're actually, if you've seen that, is it, um, is it Melissa McCarthy? And she decides to go to college with her kids. I promise, I promise, I won't do that. Although I've asked Isaiah for years if I can be his roommate in the dorms, because I think that that could be a benefit to both of us. Um, but he he used to say yes. Uh, he used to say yes, I could be his dorm roommate, but I think he was eight or nine. Now Isaiah at almost 16, now he's saying, saying, mommy, of course you can't. Note what he calls me. But uh, a couple years ago, he was like, I don't know if that's like, that goes with the rule. So just he's progressed to going from, yes, I can be his roommate in the dorm room to, I don't know if that's allowed to seriously. Okay, so 
my my whole thing on sending my kids off to college is I promise I won't go to college with them, although I really want to. Um, but I will probably, Sean and I will be there dropping them off. Sean will be fluffing the pillows. He, we, he, we will be getting the sheets in order. I mean, I'll be decorating the dorm room. We will definitely be all up in their grill and we will wait until they say enough. And then we'll know, okay, it's enough. We've got we've to gotta let go. And, uh, but I think of, when I send my kids off to college, there's some things that I hope that we've instilled in them that I don't have to repeat because I repeated it so much, but I, I hope and pray that it just sticks in their head. And so uh, the first three verses in Proverbs 29 is uh, three verses for sending us off onto our own self to do our own Bible reading and our own Bible study, and honestly, our own life. If we never went back and studied another book of the Bible again, which I I suggest you don't give up, uh, these would be some things to keep in mind as you go forward in life. Verse one, it says, whoever remains stiff-necked after many rebukes, Proverbs has many rebukes, many rebukes, they will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Okay, uh, I don't want to remain stiff-necked, and if by chapter 29, day 29, I'm still set in my ways, then Proverbs hasn't worn me down like it should. And I'm not trying to wear down my kids, but we all know as parents, we really are. We're trying to just be in their ear, and I'm trying to hold back and be less annoying in, in their ear, but we're wanting to give wisdom to them constantly and we're hoping that they won't just be like they were when they were 13 or 14 like I know better that we're getting we're getting to be in their mind more wise as they get older because they're starting to see life worked out and so that they wouldn't be stiff-necked but that we after going through proverbs would not remain stiff-necked in our old thinking now, uh, verse 2 when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. I think about the righteous thriving. That's people in right standing. It says when the right standing with Jesus thrive, the people rejoice. What you put into practice and how you now are in your home and how you are at work, this should make people go, what happened? In fact, in the New Testament, uh, after the disciples had been with Jesus, people commented, surely these men have been with the Lord. There was an, an obvious uh, thing about them after they'd been with Jesus that it had changed them. And we've been in Proverbs and we have been with Jesus through the word. It should change us. And so when we thrive in that, the people will rejoice. Okay, in verse three, a man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father and mother, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. Oh my gosh, I need to say nothing more when it comes to college, right? Love wisdom, bring joy to the father and mother because the companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. I know that I went there and that's a little extreme to bring that back to college, but we know how crazy college can get. But a man or a woman lo who loves wisdom brings joy. That is, yes, the human father and mother, but I think God does just love on me more. And uh, I feel a bit of like, good job, Sonny, good job, when he knows I'm seeking and loving wisdom because it brings him joy. So as we, we end out Proverbs, the whole book, those are some things, some verses for on the way. But let's go back on, on a path of memory lane. So verse six says, evildoers are snared by their own sin, but the righteous shout for joy and are glad. First part, evildoers are snared by their own sin. I put out to the side as a dog returns to its vomit. This we just talked about recently. Evil doers go back and go back and they're snared by it. They're not free, but it says, but the righteous, those in right standing with Jesus shout for joy and are glad they're set free. There's freedom. What I didn't talk about, and I think I will before we end, because it will talk about the snare again, uh, is that there there's the fowler's snare and it's this invisible net that birds can't see. But when they fly through it, that's how uh, the fowler traps them and that is used, if you've seen that in the Bible, that's used often in the Bible uh, to show that the invisible things that will trap you, uh, 
they they bind you up and literally the bird is trapped but they didn't see it coming and so that's why we are to be wise okay another one is verse eight mockers stir up a city that's drama seekers mockers stir up they stir up a city and think of that beyond just a city uh although it we should know that our drama is far reaching but we stir up if we're a mocker if we're someone letting junk spew from our mouth we're stirring up whatever environment we're in we talked about being a drama seeker a few days ago it says but the wise turn away anger and that's being a peacemaker so we've talked about drama seekers peacemakers that verse remind reminds us let's go to verse 11 fools give full vent to their rage but the wise bring calm in the end okay the wise bring calm that's being the thermostat we talked about that bringing the peace and the calm that could require we're peacemakers or it could just mean we walk into a room and we set the tone we change the tone because we discern some things up but the first part of 11 says fools give full vent to their rage we talked about road rage in one of the the chapters and we talked about road rage because i said that it's amazing to me how mad people can be when I've seen people mad because you let them go at the four-way stop and it confused them enough, even though they got to go first, that they're mad. And that trigger comes from a deeper root of anger because no one who's, who's having a so-so or normal life can have that enrage them. It's not that big of a deal. So there's a root cause to anger and, and Fools give full vent to their rage. Another chapter in Proverbs, and I'm telling you this because if you missed any of these videos, find these because they're so, Proverbs is gold every chapter. But one of the things that we talked about was uh, when it came to anger was that we're supposed to have a tempered life. So our emotions should be more like this because life does this. And frankly, I'm not looking to live an emotional roller coaster, but life will give me that. Pastor talked about it this week that if we're not prepared for the storm, then it rocks us. But when we're prepared for the storm, we're prepared and we can stay steadier. We know ahead of time how to prepare and what to do. And so I want to be where when the storm hits, I'm going to feel a little bump. I'm going to feel a little bit of the earth shake and the, the rain shake the and the thunder shake the windows. But for the most part, am I steady when life is doing this? And that is being tempered, which is another chapter we talked about. All right. Verse 13 the poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. Okay, this you might go, what are you talking about? The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. That's saying we all have a chance to be teachable. It's saying we all have a chance. The oppressor, I mean, Saul killed Christians. He was out for Peter and the disciples. It's funny, he didn't, he'd come in contact with them but not actually kill them. But then he'd take all of these Christians that had just converted to following Jesus and right in front of the eyes of the disciples, he would take them to murder them or to uh, throw them in prison, which prison was torture back then. And Saul was an oppressor. He was a persecutor. Like we don't really realize what a terrible man Saul was. He thought he was doing the right thing, but he, he didn't hold back at all. And then God came, Jesus showed up to him and he converted to love Jesus and want to share Jesus and then wrote most of the New Testament. And, uh, you know, Peter wasn't real excited about this. Peter was like, dude, you have been my enemy. Now you want me to just love you? Peter was a hardcore dude too. You know, I mean, he denied Jesus three times. He said he wouldn't. And then he, Jesus came back and then he got a little offended three times because Jesus asked about love my sheep, feed my sheep. And so Paul was a bit of like a, hey, well, Saul was that dude too. So they, got, they went head to head. Paul and Peter didn't really go and do ministry together and go, yeah, we're buddies now. They just... Peter had to get over himself and Saul had a lot to regret. But the point of this verse is that the poor and the oppressor have it in common that the Lord gives sight to the eyes of both, meaning God gives everyone a chance, no matter how vile or awful. So no one is too far from his grace. Verse 15, a rod and a reprimand impart wisdom, but a child left undisciplined disgraces its mother. 
Okay, let's be honest. We know the kid who's freaking out in the store. And no matter what the parents say, they just escalate. That child probably doesn't really have a lot of discipline at home or out in public and isn't real worried about if they keep doing what they're doing, something's going to happen. Now, I'm not saying my kids were good in stores. I'm saying uh, they learned that there was a consequence. They got better in stores. They got better in restaurants uh, because discipline is the thing that that imparts wisdom. But a child left undisciplined disgraces its mother. I'm not just talking about in Target. I'm talking about when they leave the home or when they're making choices on their own. Uh, There have been times Sean and I should have disciplined and grounded and actually followed through on what we we, uh, threatened to do and we didn't. And the results were, it was kind of disgraceful. Like, we said you will plug in your phone at night and then after we let it go and then we found out they didn't plug in their phone they left it in their room all night probably on it late into the night and then we found out and then we found out that they were texting someone till two three in the morning and we go what are you doing well we didn't follow through on checking and then when they did what they shouldn't have done because we're not going to always check them every single moment when we found that out There were times we didn't ground them. There was no consequence, so why wouldn't they take their phone in their room the next time? It's disgraceful because I go, what is wrong? What did I do wrong? Well, I didn't follow through. So I love that verse. Uh, Remember what I said in a chapter before I talked about uh, Susanna Wesley saying, I feel that if I love my children enough, I will discipline them now so that when they are grown, others who don't love them or care for them won't be the ones that discipline them or have to discipline them because it will be much more severe when they're disciplined by someone who doesn't care about them. That could be loss of a job. That could be uh, completely humiliating them later because I didn't love them enough to discipline them and train them now, which is more work for me. I don't really want to have them not like me. I don't really want to have to do that because I don't want to have to discipline But that's why the Bible repeated this over and over in Proverbs. Okay, verse uh, 17 talks about it again. Discipline your child and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights you desire. I have seen with my sister and brother-in-law, Susan and Brian, that uh, if they discipline at home, then when they are at someone else's home or somewhere else, and all they have to do is say, Magnolia, do I need to get the wooden spoon? Magnolia, literally, at two and a half years old, literally will stop and start behaving. They don't have to do anything, but she knows that it's not just an empty threat. So discipline your children and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights you desire. Now remember, always discipline in peace, not in anger. Always discipline with a level head, not out of frustration. We shouldn't over-discipline. We should be controlled and there should be a conversation around it as well. Maybe before, during, or after, or all three. Okay, verse 18. Where there is no revelation people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Uh, This one would be about inspiration and vision, that if you don't have a vision for your life, if you're not inspired for your own life, then uh, it's hard to inspire others, even people in your home, to to get on board. And so we haven't really talked about that in weeks past. I feel like we will, even if it's Proverbs 31, we're going to talk about inspiring and bringing vision to your own home even. Okay, another one that was a repeat is verse 20. Do you see someone who speaks in haste? Remember I said I love the word haste. I love the word prudence because these are strong but powerful words and we have really stopped using them so much. But do you see someone who speaks in haste? There is more hope hope for a fool than for them. This is that being even tempered. This is being self-aware that we are prepared. So we're more tempered. We're more even keeled and we do not speak in haste. We, we, we've talked a lot about this. Listen first, speak later, 
hold your tongue, let people talk first. But when we talk in haste, it can be that we're not self-aware that we're just kind of always the one talking or we're jumping at something too quick because we're not just holding our tongue and waiting and thinking and praying on it. Another verse. 21, a servant pampered from youth will turn out to be insolent. Oh my gosh. That's basically saying don't spoil your children or the people who work for you or the people that you shouldn't be spoiling. It's saying teach and make children grow. Teach and make those who work for you grow. To pamper doesn't work out sometimes. So that's a great verse to to remember. Verse 22, any angry person stirs up conflict. And a hot-tempered person commits many sins. We've already talked about that. Anger, not being tempered, the road rage keeps coming up. 23, pride brings a person low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. The lowly in spirit gain honor, that was the Jesus way. The Jesus way was to say, be humble, kind, love your neighbor. He came on the scene and he was the opposite of pride. Uh, but we saw the religious leaders were the epitome of pride. And so that is that is the Jesus way versus the religious way. Last one, verse 25. Fear of man will prove to be a snare. There's that, that snare again, that net that will catch, uh, that basically a fowler snare was a net. And it wasn't a net with perfect squares. It was actually real weird and you couldn't see it. It was very thin. So almost like a spider web, but it was made with string that a fowler, that's a hunter of birds would make. And so you couldn't really see it. But once a, once wings got in there, it was so snarly, even the net, it would capture them. So it says fear of man will prove to be a snare, meaning you'll feel trapped, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. It's so good. The bondage of the fowler's snare is bondage. It's literally a wrapped up prison. But trusting in the Lord and not living in the fear of man, but living in the fear of the Lord is where you're kept safe. So at the bottom of this page, if you're with me in my Proverbs book, you'll see the the recap of yesterday, qualities of a good leader, the seven qualities Solomon listed. And if you missed yesterday... I really enjoyed that. We got to talk about the Holy Spirit from um, tabernacle to temple to uh, Jesus allowing the temple to not be necessary because now we are the temple. And so, and the more of like, what is the working of the Holy Spirit? So if you missed that, please check that out. The, The other thing I want to remind you, and I said this a few days ago or last week, that I'm going to have Season, who is my sister, who wrote a book that we debuted at Girls Retreat called Seeds. And I really feel like it's a great companion to what we just went through with Proverbs, because what it will do is allow you that on your own time, you find that prayer couch, prayer chair, prayer porch, although I know you won't use the porch in the winter. I love my porch with my chair, my Adirondack chair, because I like the positioning of it. I like that I actually um, feel like I want to read every time I get in that chair. So it's a place that brings me um, ease in reading my Bible and just having time alone, my prayer journal. And that is obviously not something I do in the winter. I find another location in my house that I have quiet time with God where I can pray, I can read, um, write in my prayer journal, uh, for sure read my Bible. Like, let's not just get back to reading the the book of an author as our devotional time. Our time with Jesus needs to include the Bible uh, to just take what an author says. And I'm saying this for my own book too, my, my Jesus Plus Life book. Although I will refer to scripture, it's not the same as having time with Jesus because his his word, the Bible, is him speaking to us. An author is someone speaking to us, but it's not the inspired word of God. So you might read a book plus the Bible plus prayer journal, or you might have a rhythm that you do one of each three days in a row and you cycle through. But Seeds will really help this book. It's a short book season wrote on on establishing habit and rhythm and uh, not having guilt and not doing it right, but give, giving suggestions on that. And you can still get that at the exchange or at Life Church. Um, it's not on Amazon yet so that you could get it if you're from out of town. Uh, but you could still join us because we're going to be talking about that on June 2nd through the 5th. 
second through the fifth over the noon hour. So we're going to get together at lunch. So maybe it's your lunch break and we're going to talk about that or you can catch up on that video later in the day. Uh, but we'll do that Sunday through Wednesday, June 2nd through the 5th. So we'll just have a one day gap from getting to see each other. But then what I want is you to always be able to go and do this on your own. Uh, and then if I, I am thinking about doing another study in the fall, that would be a Facebook live like this. And we would do it once a week. I would like to study the, the life of Jacob. I've always loved him, even since I was homeschooled in a fifth or sixth grader, and we would do a Bible timeline. And I was I was so amazed by his wife's, um, Rachel and Leah, and how he was he was actually tricked into marrying the older sister by his new father in law, and. And like, it's just everything about Jacob's story is so exciting and there's so much to learn from it. So I'm gonna do that probably in the fall, once a week, Facebook Live, we we go through the Bible, that part of Jacob's story and we learn from it. So, um, but I love you guys and uh, so excited that we still have a few days together. So share this, I forgot to say that, share this now, it doesn't kick you off. Uh, it will allow you to share this with people who are in your circle that are outside of my circle. So let's pray. God, thank you for my friends who have been so faithful to connect and commit to your Bible. God, we love you and we thank you for where you're going to take us next, that we would plan and prepare, that we would not only think on the last uh, few verses we just went over that were repeats of repeats of repeats because you're trying to tell us something through those. But God, we would also move forward and think of the plan of where in scripture you want to take us individually next, what place you want to take us in our home or, or in our backyard, that we're going to just have a plan to meet with you because we just want more. Okay, my phone just rang, so I think that is time to stop. We love you guys. I love you, and we'll see you tomorrow.